This is the Digital DJ Tips review of the new Reloop Ready controller from Reloop. It is a small form factor, portable Serato DJ controller, and it's very different from another one you might have seen recently, which was exactly the same size, and that was this little one I've got here, the Reloop Buddy. So they look the same, but this one is for iOS. It's got a little stand in the back where you can put an iPad in, and it works with algorithms DJ Pro AI software, whereas this little one I've got here in front of me, the Reloop Ready, is for Serato, and actually it's aimed at a slightly different kind of person to the Reloop Buddy. So in this review, I'm gonna talk you through what it's got, what it hasn't got, who it's aimed at, and whether I recommend it for you. At the end of it, you'll be sure as to whether this is the right thing to buy. Now, as ever, if you enjoy this, please do like, follow, and subscribe so we can bring you more videos just like this one. Right, let's get started and have a little look at this. So it's a two-channel Serato DJ controller. It is designed to fit over your laptop your laptop keyboard so that you can kind of like unfold your laptop, pop this on and then DJ with it plugged in and get all the features I'm about to talk you through. So you could use it on a plane seat or in a hotel room or anywhere where you just sat down uh, and you haven't really got room to set up your DJ gear. The big thing about this is that it's got full size pads and these are as big as you get on literally pro gear and they're full RGB as well, although it's hard to tell in this light, and I'll tell you why that is in a minute. So these are full-size pads. The way they've managed to fit full-size pads onto a small controller like this, have you spotted it yet? Can you see it yet? The tempo faders are here. Instead of being at the sides, the tempo faders are here at the top. Now this is very unusual. You're either gonna say that's a deal breaker or you're gonna think, oh, I could actually live with that. But in doing that, in moving the, the deck tempo faders up here, it's freed up the space for everything else to spread out so you get these full pads that control everything in Serato. All the pad modes are here. You've got your scratch bank, your sample bank. You've got your uh, manual and auto looping, beat gridding, uh, it's all here. Uh, and also, we've got full Serato effects units at the top. We're controlling both Serato effects units. You don't get this in a lot of DJ controllers at any price nowadays. And everything else that you'd expect to find is here. Two band EQ, which I think is all right for this price. Uh, a gain control, you've got per channel filters, key lock, vinyl mode, key sync, slip mode here, parameter knobs here. Uh, the way you change the modes on the pads is by holding this mode button down and then pressing the pad that corresponds to the mode you want. And in very small right, ridiculously small writing underneath each pad is the mode that you can use and you're going to get used to selecting those without having to read it but if you do want to read it in dark light then uh, good luck to you so that's how that works but the thing here is they've managed to squash everything in now that does make it a little bit fiddly in use but it is awesome if you're a DJ that wants everything for whatever reason in a tiny Serato controller. So we'll talk about what kind of DJ that is in a second. I just want to let you know what it was like to use. It was a little bit fiddly, but actually we really liked it. The jog wheels are nice. The, uh, the pads obviously are brilliant because they've been designed to be brilliant. They're just a joy to use. Uh, the play and pause and cue, cue buttons here, they're nice. They're, they're clicky. They do the job fine. There's a shift layer. So you've got lots of other things going on here that you can get used to and use. I like the single loop encoders per channel. I think they're really good. Uh, one thing that I wasn't so keen on is that down here where you've got the the headphones controls, the headphone volume and the Qmix volume, you also have the master volume here as well. But it's the headphone volumes that I wasn't so, so, um, so pleased with down here. Because when you're DJing with no speakers, you're gonna be using those quite a lot. I don't know about you, but if you've ever DJed uh, just, just in your headphones using the Q-Mix functions, you're always tweaking them. Uh, and you're always adjusting the headphones just like you'd adjust the volume in the room when you're DJing. And those there, especially when you've got the leads here, plugged in and tucked in as well. They're just quite fiddly to reach. So I'd like to have seen those somewhere a little bit more accessible in the design of this controller. Uh, and another thing that I wasn't keen about is the, the brightness of the pads. They're very, very dim. Now. Reloop will say it's because this is uh, powered from your USB, there's no external power, but even so, I think these pads could have been brighter. I've seen brighter pads on DJ controllers that are USB powered. They're okay in the dark, but as soon as you've got any lighting going on, you're just not gonna spot. You know, if you're in any kind of daylight or in bright sunlight, you're not gonna see what's going on with the pads at all, and that could be a problem if you wanna play with this somewhere that isn't dark. So, who's it for? Well, this is really for two types of DJ. And one 
is called out by Reloop. Another one that I've thought of is uh, I'm going to talk to you about as well, but there's one kind of DJ I think this isn't for. So if you're thinking, is this for me or not? Well, which one of these is you? So firstly, if you're a, a pro or a working DJ that wants a second controller that's nice and small that you can use to prepare your Serato DJ sets on, you're going to love this. It's actually had, uh, our tutor DJ Angelo has had a hand in the design of this because he's a Reloop ambassador and he helped them with this. And he said he wanted a controller that he could prepare his sets on. Now, if you know DJ Angelo, he plays some really quite complicated DJ routines, a lot of setup. He's got to prepare his Serato flips. He's got to ha maybe have manual loops that he's set on them. And he's got a lot of stuff that you can't do on other small DJ controllers. So for him, this is awesome. And for other DJs like that, if you're someone who likes to prepare your sets ahead of time and you want to do it out and about on a controller with everything on it, perfect. You know, this costs 280 euros. It's not particularly cheap for a small DJ controller. But if you already own Serato, it's just about doable. So that kind of DJ, yes, I think is going to like this. Again, another kind of DJ I think that's going to go for this would be the DJ looking for a second controller or a DJ who knows what he or she is doing looking for a first controller where you want an ultra portable setup because this thing is tiny. This will fit easily into a backpack along with a small laptop, a battery powered speaker, and then you can head up the hill and do a DJ set on battery from you know outdoors anywhere get that live streamed out to the world a lot of people are enjoying doing that kind of stuff nowadays it's perfect for that and i think it's awesome for that it's something i will quite likely find myself using it for at some point because i do like to do those kind of on location live streams myself so for those two kinds of djs pro dj preparing your sets and someone who wants an ultra portable uh, fully featured serato controller to use for whatever reason but i think battery live streaming is a big one it's it's awesome the kind of DJ I think it isn't for would be a beginner DJ looking for a first controller. A lot of these tiny controllers get sold to beginners. You know, I'm thinking that the, the Newmark DJ to go to touch, Newmark Party Mix, um, and the DDJ 200 from Pioneer. But this is expensive because you get Serato DJ Lite with it, and really to unlock all the features that they've squashed into it and that you're paying for, you need Serato DJ Pro, and that costs you an extra hundred dollars normally on top which makes it really expensive for four hundred dollars you can get a lot more for your money nowadays you know for the same price as this little unit you could buy a tractor control s2 which is a much bigger controller it's got loads and loads of features on it and it also has the tractor software in the box fully featured tractor software in the box also for around the same kind of money uh, cheaper in fact you could buy the newmark mix track pro mix track fx platinum which has got on-screen displays it hasn't got the same control over Serato's effects, hasn't got pads that do as much as these, but that's by design for beginners because you don't probably want all that stuff. And they are lovely controllers. That Both, both of the mixed track uh, pro controllers are really good value for money and they're cheaper than this. Or you could go for something like the Hercules DJ Control Impulse 500. Again, that controller has got uh, not quite the same feature set as this. And again, it's missing some of the things that are on here, but it's a much more comfortable controller to use as your only controller. And you do get more for your money with that controller. So not really for beginners beginners I would say. At the end of the day it's uh, a niche controller. Too fiddly for beginners and too expensive uh, and not something that uh, would be my recommendation as a first controller. But as a second controller for a pro DJ wanting, wanting to prepare sets or for someone wanting something to use as a live streaming um, portable device, pretty awesome. You know I'll go back to what I said at the beginning though. The iPhone 12 mini, at the time of recording this, the iPhone 12 is the most current one, uh, has got pretty much everything in the bigger ones, but in that form factor that some people want, that small phone form factor that some people want. This does that more or less, but it's not quite got the quality. I would love to see, for maybe a bit more money, a little controller like this that's got all the features on it, but that's built for pros. It's got better quality faders on it, a better quality build. Uh, and that would be kind of like the the, the controller version of something like the the Prime Go from Den and DJ, which is a, a pro device through and through, it's just tiny. I'd love to see someone do that. I mean, for the money here, you, it's all right. What you're getting is all right. Uh, it's, it's not cheap, but it's all right. But I would love to see someone do that with better quality faders and just a better quality build overall. That said, this is fine for what it is. Uh, and if you are one of the DJs that I've called out that this might be useful for, that it's aimed at, I think you're probably already thinking, yeah, I could go for that. I, I can see what that's all about. The real thing that might turn you off is the layout, because 
because if you just a stickler for the layout being how it should be, then you ain't gonna like those tempo faders. But honestly, I found them fine where they are. I didn't find a problem with them at all. You could even try remapping them to something else and have something a little bit unique going on. So that's our look at this little controller, the Reloop Ready. Uh, if you've enjoyed this or if you want more information about it, uh, then you can tell us underneath in the comments. There's also a full written version of this review that you can look at as well. Uh, but for now, that's it from us. Hope you've enjoyed it. Phil here at Digital DJ Tips saying get good, get out there, make the moments, and we'll see you again very soon.